Hey guys, this is all streamed at back with another episode of NBA 2K19 my GM mode and Right now we have the team and player options we have it looks like Taylor and Collinsworth we don't want really um, Let me see what the thing here is Taylor and Collinsworth. Really? We don't want them? I kind of think we do. Simply because we need the players. They don't have any badges, but that's fine. And LeBron is a free agent. And it does not... Okay, so yeah, they are unrestricted. So there's LeBron. We've got Kevin Durant. Paul George. Jokic. DeAndre Jordan. But the ones that we're really interested in are LeBron and uh, Durant. It would be nice to have either one of them. I would prefer Durant to LeBron because I am not a fan of LeBron. And Durant is younger. But let's see what happens. So we've got qualifying offers. Okay, so uh, we've got a... Okay, yeah, so did we see the news? It looks like we've got ourselves a big fish in the pond. Talking about LeBron, that's precisely who he's referring to. Okay, so do we need anything from him? Just let him know how he can help. Give me your hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, what does this hat have to do with LeBron? I want to give it to him. Why? Show him that we're willing to do whatever it takes to get him on board. Show him we're 100% committed to him, his vision, and doing whatever it takes to build a championship contender. And most importantly, to show that we have a, that we are united in this vision from the very top of the organization on down okay it'll show LeBron that we mean business and there he is without a hat Okay, yeah, so he's got about 20 hats sitting at home. Okay, he doesn't want to sell the hat on eBay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so nobody other than LeBron will touch it. And plus one for boldness. And here we are with LeBron. We have his undivided attention. Pitch me on the tornadoes. Why should I bring my talents to St. Louis? So I'll give you the sweet hat. Okay, so what the hat means... Okay, so apparently it's Texas' favorite hat. He says it's lucky. He's wearing it when he celebrated making his first million. 
Okay, it is just a goofy hat, but what it symbolizes is much more important than what it is. We're in total alignment from the top to the bottom of the organization. We all pull in the same direction, and it starts with Tex and trickles on down to everyone in the building. Every one of us, from Tex to the ball boys, are committed to making your run here a success. And we're committed to you and to making your vision for yourself come true. That's what the hat represents. And I want you to remember that when you meet with other teams, they might be able to offer you the max, they might be able to offer you star running mates, but I can guarantee this. None of them are as lined as in their vision from the top to the bottom as we are. He wants to keep it. Of course he can keep it. Even if he doesn't sign with us, we just want him to know how much we appreciate him taking the time to meet with us. Okay, he'll keep us in mind. Okay, so they can agree to deals, they just can't sign anything right now during a three day moratorium. Nothing. He's gone. I don't like that. Okay, um... Let's go after Paul George. Okay, so we are interested in Paul George. Uh, let's ask him about team quality. Okay, a decent team. He'd be willing to play on it despite not being a championship contender at the moment. I like that. Uh, team style. He's a fantastic style fit for what the coach is trying to do. Perfect. Potential role. Okay, he doesn't see himself clashing with any of the major players on the team right now. The team state. Okay, he's not thrilled with where the tornadoes are right now, but he thinks he can make it work. Okay, so the budget for operations needs to be upped or we may lose out on quality free agents. Uh, that's just his two cents. Which seems to be about as much as you put into operations around here. Ooh. Um... Four years for 131 million. Let's see here. Um Let's see if we can get him down to, uh, yeah. You know, I don't think we're going to be able to sign him. Um, you know what, let's... Let's see what he'll do here. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so he's done. That's fine. Um, and, you know, we don't need anybody, I don't think. It would be nice to have somebody with 22 badges, but um, it is what it is. We could maybe go for Brooke Lopez. But yeah, most of these guys are underneath my starters anyway. So we missed out on LeBron, we missed out on Durant. Okay, we're just going to go ahead we're going to skip through this. Okay, so we're in the conference room with Lewis Meyer, the owner. Or a owner. Um, location for the All-Star Game. Uh, it should be hosted by one of the two expansion teams. Okay, he's got to agree. Uh, one of them gets it this year, the other gets it next. Okay. The most exciting option would be either the Sonics or the Tornadoes. Uh, however... Okay, Bob Sanderson, the owner of the Sonics, and the father of our rival GM of the Sonics, thinks that we should be the ones hosting. Okay, so it's a privilege to be seated here. Okay, he'd love to host it. But he doesn't want to step on anybody's toes. Okay, so Sanderson has a proposal. Okay, so the two teams are going to play against each other for the right to host the All-Star Game during the Summer League. So when the teams play during the Summer League, whoever wins gets the All-Star Game. You drive up interest in the Summer League, sell ad TV rights, drive up interest in, in the games in general, which drives up interest in the All-Star Game. And either way, it's a good destination. It'll be good for the league. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. And nobody objects. Okay. So, we're going to be playing against the Sonics in the Summer League. And the winner of that game will host the All-Star Game this year. Perfect. So, let's keep going through here. Uh, Texas office. Okay, it's not quite the same as a regular season game, uh, but we've got real, real live NBA talent out there, and a few of them are going to be stars one day. Okay, so yeah, it's a great idea for the for the teams to play each other. Okay. Bunch of dialogue that doesn't really have anything to do with the game.
Okay, and maybe we can finish the free agency, the team facility parking lot. Okay, I'm fine. He's still good with our bets. Why wouldn't I be? I can understand if you didn't want to make a fool of yourself. You already had enough of that for one season. Besides, now when you lose, you'll also be losing the All-Star game. Okay, nothing can make me pull out of this bet. I'm not a vengeful person, but I gotta admit, really looking forward to seeing the look on your face when you're up there letting the whole world know what a weaselly little creep you are. Okay, so if he wins, we give a press conference wearing a t-shirt with his face on it where we let everybody know that he's the superior GM. If I win, then he gives a press conference where he admits that he was behind all the leaks. Okay, more stuff that has nothing to do with the game. Okay, so um, he's asking if we have some kind of a bet or beef. There we go. Okay, so we heard us talking about the bet. Okay, we didn't want to burden them. So, new team, new teammates, fragile chemistry. They've already got a lot on the line with the whole all-star thing. Didn't want to risk them finding out and pushing too hard. Uh, we just want them to go out and play the game. Alright, so here we are in the locker room then. So, Summer League. Okay, we're talking about Vegas. Um, okay, it's going to be a little different this year. All-Star Game situation. I want to make sure they understand. Okay, the game against the Sonics determines who hosts All-Star Weekend. Uh, it's a big deal. They can all appreciate the gravity of the situation, but it's his job to stress just how important it is to the franchise. It's a brand new franchise, building a new fan base in a new city. It will go a long way towards establishing the, us and driving up interest in the team. Not to mention the money that comes from hosting All-Star Weekend. So it's massively important. And we'd appreciate it if they did me a solid and treated the game like the big deal it is. It'd make it a lot easier. Okay, so basically it's just, yeah, just win the game, win the game, win the game. And I'm going to come clean and let everybody know. So it's not illegal, it's not money, it's just a little bet. Okay, so... We didn't want to affect their game. Didn't want to change the way that they played. Okay, plus one for compassion.
So now maybe we can end free agency. There we go. So now we have a press conference. Okay, so talk a little bit about the experience of running an expansion team. Walk us through what it's been like. Any surprises? Anything unexpectedly harder or easier than we th thought going into it? Tough but rewarding. Okay, we're healthy rivals. Okay, he's built a strong roster. There were the opponents. Uh, some of the stuff on social media with Andrew is Sim trying to get a seat at the table. Trying to get attention so people will notice the great job he's done over there. Uh, when we meet the Summer League, it's going to be a great matchup between two great teams, helmed by two great competitors. I uh, look forward to the challenge and opportunity to see how it plays on the court. Team image goes up, team value goes up, fan interest is at 100%, chemistry is down at 52, but morale is good. There we go. Free agency is done. Uh, we've got player progression. Okay, and now we are at the NBA Summer League. So we have the Summer League, the All-Star City Selection, the 2K Hoop Summit, training camps, and then advance to the next season. So let's go ahead and get into the Summer League. Um, we need a complete roster of 13 players. Okay, um, there we go. So let's see who what we've got here. We need a point guard, a small forward, and a power forward. That will bring it up to 10, and we need a total of 13. So point guard, small forward, power forward. Let's take Morris. Okay, we need a small forward and a power forward. Let's take Jones. I think. You know what? We might take somebody else. There we go. We're going to take Curex. Okay, then we need a power forward. Let's take Let's take Johnson. Okay, we've got two points, two shooting guards, two small forwards, two power forwards, and two centers. So let's take a third point. Or actually, maybe even... Let's take a shooting guard, a small forward that could possibly play power as well. And a power... 
They can also play center. So if we could find a tall Or actually, let's do a smaller center. Like uh, Costello, he could do both. Okay, maybe a small forward who's a little bit taller. Oh, uh, let's go ahead and do Ray. And let's see here. If we could do You know, let's take let's take Sims. That could work. The first day we don't have a game. There's our first game against the Timberwolves. Yes. All right, we are starting. There we go. Three pointer from Hart. And there's Purtle. All right, we are up by three at the end of the first, and we're right into the second. There we go. Johnson with an easy bucket off the pick and roll. There we go. Had to pass that up. He was losing speed like crazy. Go. Thank you. Good three by Hart. Okay, that was uh, not a good offensive play. But we're still up by 10 at the half. Oh! Nice. One handed hanger. There we go. Ooh, that was a nice catch and shoot three. And there's Podal. All right, so we are up. Uh, we've doubled their score. We're up by 28. Wow! Okay, these guys cannot oop at all, so I won't even try. Collinsworth for three. Alright, that is it. 45 to 70, we've won. Okay, so our first game in the Summer League, we have won, and the adjusted score is 140 to 90. 
And that's going to end it for today's episode. Thank you for watching. My name is Allstream. That hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications.